I've had quite a few people reach out to me asking about 12 volt charging equipment, 12 volt solar power systems and stuff. I know I do a lot of 48 volt solar power stuff on my channel. Originally I started out at 12 volt, but I did make the jump to 48 when I started trying to power my house and a bunch of other bigger appliances. But I've had a lot of my fans reach out saying that they still mess with 12 volts and they wanna see more 12 volt stuff on the channel, more 12 volt content, more 12 volt projects. And I can get on board with that. We do review a lot of 12 volt batteries. So I figured it's time to start doing a little bit more 12 volt equipment. So what we have here is a 2000 watt 12 volt pure sine wave inverter from this company called Jun, Jun Pow. This is their LG 280Ti. They actually sent me this to review. So I was actually kind of happy to get my hands on this thing. The only other inverters that we've used on the channel that were 12 volt is my big Sun Gold Power Low Frequency Inverter, which is this one right here that we're actually building into a 12 volt battery testing station so that's why it's mounted up here this thing's amazing but it's extremely heavy it's very well built and it's very heavy duty and it has a massive surge rating because it's a low frequency inverter and then the other inverter we've used a lot on the channel is the harbor freight jupiter and that thing's been pretty good too but i'm happy to have my hands on another nice 12 volt hopefully a good 12 volt inverter we're gonna be doing some testing on this thing and yeah hopefully it kind of holds up we're gonna do some torture testing and just see how good it is got dual fans on the back looks like it has pretty nice terminals where you're gonna connect your main load wires you need that on a 12 volt inverter because these are gonna pull a lot of amps and this being a 2000 watt inverter, there's a chance you could pull close to 200 amps at max load. Here's what the front of the unit looks like. We have two position power switch, and that may have something to do with this little display that they give you. So maybe you put it in remote mode, connect this display with the included ethernet cable, and this is gonna display your voltage and your power and all that. So we'll definitely check all that out. You also have your built-in plugs. These are GFCI outlets. And then right here underneath this cover, you're gonna have a terminal block where you can wire in like a power strip or a load center or whatever you wanna do. So that's nice that they give you both because if you just wanna take this out of the box and use it, you know, if you're camping or doing something small, you can very easily do that. Or if you want to hardwire it into maybe a camper or a small RV or something like that and have power, you can also do that as well. You get a status LED, you get your remote wire connect right there. Now the little dip switches right here, that's how you're going to set your voltage to 110 or 120 volts and then 50 or 60 hertz frequency. It can do both. Here's what the bottom looks like. You get a little sticker right here with some more model information if you guys want to check that out. So yeah, it says the input is 198 amps. So you're going to need some nice thick cabling to run this thing and it actually comes with that. Also the whole body of the inverter is metal and then the feet are metal as well but they actually put these little rubber booties on there. That way when you mount this you don't get any vibration, maybe any noise from the fans transmitting through the inverter to whatever you're mounting it to. So that's kind of nice. It does feel really good quality. You know you get a nice metal case, no plastic so that's nice. This is going to be your remote cable to run the little display to the inverter. So you can mount the inverter down in your battery box or in your engine hold or somewhere. But you'd mount this somewhere low where your batteries are at. You can run this inside of your camper RV or remotely mount it wherever you want and you can easily turn on and off the inverter from here. So that's nice and you get a long, not sure how long this cable is. And then it even comes with power cables. And these appear to be two gauge power cables. So that's nice because a lot of inverters don't come with power cables. So you already get those off the rip. And then of course you do get your instruction manual. I would recommend reading through this if you're unfamiliar with this or at least read through it just to get familiar with the specs and what this thing can actually do. So that's it. You kind of get everything you need to start running this thing right out of the box. All you need is a battery and some loads. Now, as far as price, this thing's selling on Amazon right now for 250 bucks. So it's not extremely expensive, but it's also not the cheapest inverter. I do like the fact that it's a 2000 watt inverter. Personally, I would not buy anything below a 2000 watt inverter. I like to kind of oversize everything I'm going to buy. And 2000 watts should power any load that you plug into the wall that's 115 volts. No 240 volt appliances, obviously, but this should easily be able to run any sort of space heaters, fridges, TVs, computers, all that stuff. And we're also gonna test some bigger loads like an air compressor and things with motors in them just to see how it does. One thing I'm gonna be very curious about the inverter is the fan control logic because the fan control on smaller, cheaper inverters, generally it's either all on above a certain load or above a certain temperature. And a lot of the cheaper inverters do not ramp the fans up or down and the fans can be kind of loud on these things, believe it or not, because they're so small, they have to run at such a high RPM. They do make quite a bit of noise. So I'm going to be very curious to see how the fans actually sound on this unit. Obviously, if the fans are crazy loud, you're not going to want to be in the same room with this thing running. All right, I'm going to get us a little setup put together so we can start dynoing this thing more or less. And it looks like the cables are probably about, I don't know, two or three feet long. So not crazy long, but at least they come with it. I'm going to be adding this 250 amp fuse between the inverter and the battery. Make sure you guys fuse your equipment to protect everything and for safety. I'm also gonna add one of these little amp watt meters as well. That way we can actually see the current that we're using. The last thing I'm gonna do before I connect the inverter's main positive wire here to our fuse is I'm actually gonna pre-charge the inverter's capacitor. So I have here a 47 ohm five watt resistor with some alligator clips. I'm just gonna connect these between the wires, just like this. So one on the positive, one on the positive of this. And I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute or two. And what that's gonna do is pre-charge the capacitors inside the inverter. That way, when you connect this, you don't get a giant spark. Mainly, it's gonna damage my shunt is the main reason I'm doing it. If you do it, and it more than likely will not damage anything, but it's best practice to try and pre-charge your inverters if you can. If not, and you just have to hook it up, it is what it is. But 
I've burned out these shunts in the past just connecting it because of the current inrush. So we have a 300 amp hour 12 volt battery connected to the inverter. We have our current shunt right there. We have a fuse right there. And right now the inverter is off. We're using no watts. So now we're gonna turn the inverter on and see what the idle consumption is. And according to this, it's seven watts. That's amazing. All right, now we're gonna start plugging some loads into this and see how it performs. Actually, I'm gonna take our little remote panel. We're gonna plug this in. This is actually capable of displaying the amount of watts we're using. And we also have the meter we can compare it to. Okay, so when you're in remote mode, you have to flip it to the second position. And now the switch on here is gonna actually turn on and off the inverter. Now the first test I wanna run is I'm gonna put maybe like a five to 800 watt load on the setup. And I just wanna see how the fans react, if they're gonna to react to load or if they're gonna to react to temperature. And when they do come on, is it gonna PWM the fans, like speed them on and off, or is it gonna be an on and off switch? All right, we're gonna go ahead and connect about a 600 watt load using my charge verter. So I just kick that on. Okay, so this is definitely load dependent fans and it does sound like the fans just turned completely on. And what's also interesting is on the little display here, it has a little fan icon. That way, if you have this mounted in the cabin of a camper or whatever, and you have this mounted somewhere far away and you can't audibly hear the fans, with this little symbol, you're gonna know the fans are running. So that's about 620 watts. I don't know how good this is gonna show up on the camera, but I'm gonna put my microphone kind of close to the fan so you guys can hear them running. and they don't appear that loud, so that's good. All right, now we get the inverter set up and then we know that everything works. Now we're gonna do a little bit of load testing. So I think the first thing I wanna try to do is plug in my fridge. And you may think a fridge is a pretty simple load and for the most part it is, but some inverters have trouble running fridges because of the startup current from the compressor. And you also have to remember refrigerators have defrost strips and defrost heaters that do create a large load. I wanna be able to make sure this works for the fridge because if you buy this and you wanna use it for an emergency backup scenario, I think a refrigerator is one of the most important appliances you're gonna to try to run. All right, here we go. So I have an extension cord. We're gonna plug that in there. We also did add a kilowatt hour meter to see sort of the efficiency we're gonna get out of the inverter. So basically power in versus power out, you'll be able to kind of judge how efficient the unit is. It says we're using, we're not really using anything right now, 12 watts. All right, well, I'm gonna let this thing run for a few hours. I'm not gonna record all of it because you guys would be here all day. So I'm gonna let this thing run for a few hours. The battery is fully charged, so we should get plenty of runtime. We'll be able to power the fridge for, I mean, at least a day, I would, I would assume. The fridge only uses about a kilowatt hour per day. The fridge doesn't use much power, so we're gonna let this run for a few hours and I'll report back if I have any issues. And the fans will not kick on until we get above 600 watts. So we're at 11 watts right now, and this one's saying 10 watts. Forgot to show, I do have this hooked up as well, so we can monitor. That's gonna be the power going in, and then these two are gonna tell us the power going out. The fridge is operating normal, no weird flickering, no weird noises from anything just yet, so we're all good there. Looks like now we're using about 100 watts, and we're putting in 115 watts, so that's a pretty good efficiency range. We have 100 watts on this meter, 100 watts on this meter, so that matches up pretty close. So that's really good to see. The fans still have not kicked on, but the unit is still ice cold to the touch. I mean, 100 watts on a 2000 watt inverter really shouldn't be pushing this thing at all, really. Everything else feels good. So, so far it's running the fridge, no problem. The inverter was able to power the fridge, no problem for a few hours straight, we had no issues. The fans never kicked on because the unit never got hot enough. And during the whole test, the unit was barely warm to the touch, no heat issues whatsoever and it had no issues with the surge of the compressor when the fridge did start up. Next, we're gonna try this 18 amp 48 volt battery charger. This is gonna draw about a thousand watts. So this will be a good medium load for the inverter. So I'm gonna use a little extension cord we had just like before, plug it all up, and there we go. Pull in 967 watts on the power meter and about over a thousand on the DC side, 78 amps. Power meter shows 969, this is showing 997. And because we're over the 600 watt threshold, the fans are now running. Let this load run for probably 20, 30 minutes just to make sure we don't have any heating issues and then we'll move on to the next test. All right, we've been running our 1,000 watt load for about 15 minutes. We're gonna take our thermal imaging camera, take a quick look at the inverter. So that's gonna be the inverter itself. And you guys can see the inverter's running nice and cool. There is a little bit of heat from the wiring itself. That's just gonna be normal with a 12 volt setup, but the inverter itself is actually very cold. And the hottest part is toward the back where the wire's at, we're about 100 degrees. And honestly, feeling it with my hand, it doesn't even feel that warm. So this thing's staying nice and cool. Those fans are doing a really good job keeping up with the heat management. So I really like to see that. Cause you definitely don't want your inverter getting really, really hot, especially if it's gonna be in a compartment by itself. So it did good on the thousand watt load test. Now I'm actually gonna recharge this battery add a couple more 12 volt batteries. And we're gonna try to fully max this thing out with another battery charger and let it run at full rated power and just see what it does. And the load's gonna be this EG4 charge verter. So on 120 volts, it'll do about 2,500 watts. And it's gonna be putting all the energy into this 40 volt power bank that powers my house. We have two batteries, that way the batteries aren't gonna be the limiting factor. And each of these batteries together adds up to 380 amp hours. So that should be plenty of battery for this inverter. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the charge verter set up 
And once we have the power flowing, I will show you guys what the numbers look like. So there it is just plugged in, not actually doing anything using 40 watts. There we are using about 1500 watts, showing 1560 on the meter. And on the DC side, we're using 125 amps, 1600 watts. So I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more just to get us to that 2000 watt rating. There we are at 1800 watts and 1900 watts indicated on the little display here. And we're pulling almost 2000 watts on the DC side. That's 150 amps. So that's quite a bit. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more to get us to the 2000 watt rating. But so far, it appears to be running it just fine. The load's running just fine. These cables are probably going to get pretty warm at 150 amps, but they feel fine just for now. Right, we're at 2,000 watts on the dot, indicated 2,100 watts on that little screen, 2,200 watts on the DC side, pull at 176 amps. So we're just going to let this run and see if it shuts off. I do believe it'll handle it just fine. The inverter is not making any weird noise. The power is steady. So yeah, we're just going to let this run for a little while and see what it does. My only concern is the wiring here is a little thin. The included two gauge cables, we'll see how these hold up, pull in 176 amps. We've had this running for now for about 20 minutes and the temperature of the inverter is only 91 degrees. So this thing's running nice and cool despite it being at full load. So the fans they have on this thing are working amazing. That with the aluminum case probably helps dissipate a little bit of heat as well. Cables are about 120 degrees. I would say if you're really gonna run this thing to its absolute limit all the time, I'd probably go ahead and upgrade those cables to zero gauge, but they're not dangerously hot. I mean, I can touch them. They do feel warm to the touch on 178 amps. And the front of the unit's pretty much stone cold. Like the front here, you just get a little bit of heat up front where the meter's at, but the rest of the unit's pretty cool. It's just the back where the fans are at. We are getting some heat signatures. And then again, where the fans are at, you guys can see we're getting some heat. It's about 112 degrees. So really not bad at all. This thing's running amazing. So we know the inverter can operate at full load with no issues at all. But for our last test, we're gonna try something that's normally really hard, especially on high frequency inverters. And that's gonna be a motor starting test because it's really gonna push this thing to its surge limit. And a lot of really cheap inverters can't surge very long if most of them can't do it at all, really. They advertise they can, but they can't. So if this thing truly can at least surge to start this motor on this compressor then we know it at least has some surge capacity that actually is usable in the real world. So this is gonna be the final test. We're gonna get this thing connected and see what happens. All right, we're plugged in. we will go ahead and kick it on. Look at that, we're running it no problem. Pulling about 800 watts. I'm gonna turn it off. Let's see if it'll restart it. Oh yeah. No problem. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our testing review of the John Paul. John Paul LGE 2800 Ti. This thing did amazing. And all the testing that we did, as you guys saw, including the compressor start test, which is very hard on inverters, especially small high frequency inverters. This thing did amazing. The build quality looks amazing. And I was very impressed with it. I'm very, very skeptical about cheap inverters, especially after having really nice ones. So I'm always kind of skeptical. That's why I'm always curious to test these cheaper units. And this thing did really good. And I definitely think we're gonna be replacing my Jupiter Pierce sine wave inverter on my 12 volt power cart with this inverter. So look out for that in a future video where we're gonna be doing that. But anyways, guys, that's it. That's gonna do it for this video. If you're still watching this at the end, you guys are the real MVPs. Thank you all so much for checking this out with me and I'll see y'all in the next video.